today we're going to unlock the secret of the third rail. What is the third rail, you ask? Third rail is what I like to call the G and the B string together as a group. The major third that happens between those two strings in the open position and, of course, on every individual fret position, the major third that happens between the G and the B string, the third rail. The G and the B string are the third rail. Standard tuning on the guitar gives us a perfect fourth between the lowest pitch string and the next one, E to A. Then we go from A to D, another perfect fourth. Then we go from D to G, another perfect fourth. And then from G to B, a major third. After that, perfect fourth again. So we have perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, major third, perfect fourth. Everybody who plays the guitar has at one time or another wondered why do we have a major third? Why do we not tune the guitar all the same way, all the way across? And in fact, of course, some people actually do tune their guitars that way, but it's a fairly small number. The answer actually takes us to another family of instruments instruments of the viol family, a very close relative of the violin family, but with one slight difference. Most of the instruments in the viol family have six strings, and they're tuned in such a way that there is a perfect fourth between the lowest string and the next one, another perfect fourth after that, then a major third, and then two more perfect fourths. So a six-string instrument that has perfect fourth, perfect fourth, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fourth. Why am I talking about this other instrument, the viol instrument, and how it's tuned, when what we really care about here is how the guitar is tuned? The usual explanation for why the guitar is tuned the way it is has to do with bar chords. If we tuned the guitar some other way, we would not have these bar chords. Our fingerings would be more difficult for many chords, etc., etc. That may be true, but it can't be the whole story because nobody is playing bar chords on those instruments. So why are they tuned that way? See, if bar chords explains the guitar tuning and doesn't explain the viol tuning, then there may be something more to the guitar tuning than you might think. The guitar is tuned in such a way that all of the notes of the open strings, or indeed all of the notes on any individual fret position, are also the notes of a pentatonic scale. A, C, D, E, G, A. On the fifth fret, all those notes, A, C, D, E, G, A, all those notes are there. A, C, D, E, G, A. The notes of a pentatonic scale. And if you take the notes of a pentatonic scale and you organize them in a series of fourths, or start out that way, you're going to hit that major third. It's inevitable. That major third will be there. Now, it doesn't have to be between the second string and the third string. It could be between any two adjacent strings. Keep in mind that the guitar did not always have six strings, and some early versions of the guitar had four strings, kind of like a ukulele. So that major third happening between the second and third string makes kind of starts to make sense, just from a logistical perspective. Let's come back to this idea of chord fingerings. Because if that major third is not there just to make bar chords easier, there must be some other benefit. Because if it turns out that you end up with the notes of a pentatonic scale all on one fret position, 
and that the major third, the only major third in the pentatonic scale, happens between the second and third strings. And on the fifth fret, that major third happens to be C major. And C major is harmony number one, interval number one of the key of C major, C major third, right there on the fifth fret. If you want to know how the key of C works, you want to know where to find C major. Here's a C major on the fifth fret. Here's a C major between the first and open position and a C major between the ninth and 10th fret. Those are all the same two notes. This C major here, this C major here, they're the same shape. C major, second string, first string, C, E, first fret, open strings, C major, 10th fret, 9th fret, on the 4th string and the 3rd string, diagonal lines, short diagonal lines, but here on the 5th fret, straight across. And major thirds going straight across from one string to the next, that only happens between the G and the B string. So if we're on the 3rd rail and we play a C major 3rd on the 5th fret and we play an F major third on the 10th fret and a G major third on the open strings, we have all three of the major thirds in the key of C. And there are only those three. Well, we can play G major on the 12th fret, but we already have the open strings. We don't need two of those for the moment. We, it's nice to know that's there. Open strings, 10th fret, 5th fret, that's our five open strings. G major is five. C, D, E, F, G. F major is four, counting down from five to four, and then one on the fifth fret once again. Every major key has three major thirds, and every major key has four minor thirds. Now those minor thirds are positioned, interestingly enough, in the spaces in between those major thirds. So if we start with the open G major and we go to the first and second fret on the third rail, that's A minor. Up a whole step to the fourth and third fret, that's B minor. We already know C major. D minor, seventh and sixth fret. E minor, ninth and eighth fret. F major, 10th fret. We have two minor thirds on one side of C major, and we have two minor thirds on the other side of C major. C major is in the middle, the tonal center. C major, the tonal center of the key of C. Starting on C, we go down to the 7, up to the 2. So from C major to B minor to D minor back to C major to E minor to A minor to F major to G major and then back to C major. The interval structure of the key is expressed as symmetrical patterns on the guitar fingerboard. Not just by some weird, strange coincidence, but it's just a perfectly logical, natural extension of the fact that that interval structure is inherently symmetrical. That symmetry is baked into the system. The guitar fingerboard is a grid. We are just simply mapping the symmetrical relationship of intervals onto this grid and just seeing where they fall, where they are. That's an A minor seventh. This is a minor seven flat five. This G dominant seventh. And F major seven. And C major 7. The third rail 
seventh arpeggios. C major seven. B minor seven flat five. A minor seven. G dominant seven. F major seven. Then we have way up here, we have D minor seven and E minor seven. The symmetry of that pattern, once you see it, it's pretty undeniable. It's pretty inescapable. The symmetry of the diatonic system is expressed in a symmetrical pattern that radiates out from the third rail. The three major thirds of the key of C. These are the relative positions of the 1, the 4, and the 5 in every major key. Now we add all four minor thirds, and again they're in the same relative positions in every key. Visualize where the notes are on the fingerboard, starting on the 5th fret, moving in both directions. We find a pattern of major thirds and minor thirds. Going from one string to the next in thirds gives us a set of symmetrical arpeggios. Every note in a diatonic major key has a symmetrical or palindromic counterpart. C has the counterpart of E. G has the counterpart of A. B has a counterpart of F. And D has its own counterpart. These palindromic note relationships express themselves as a mirror image on the piano keyboard.
If we take the note names from the key of C and express them as key degrees, Roman numerals, we can see how this pattern would be exactly the same for every single key. If instead of thinking of the guitar as something that starts with the lowest string and goes up and up and up and up in pitch from there, because all of, of course, all of our chords, generally, especially when, you, when you're starting out, begin on the fifth string or the sixth string. And then you kind of build off of that. Eventually, maybe you'll play chords rooted on the fourth string. You know, it's kind of, well, what if I think of that string as the starting point? I can only go up just so far from there, but what if I think of that as the starting point going the other way? Why do I always want to think of the sixth string and the fifth string as the place I start to consider what I'm going to play? Well, it's convenient. It's the thing we see most easily. It's the thing that's just right there in front of us. The dots are there, the string is there. It's kind of hard to see what's going on way over there. So you have to have it in your head. You have to get it more internally. Isn't that what we want to do anyway? Don't we want to get there? Well, I mean, you can sort of see it. I mean, it's not like it's impossible to see what's going on over there. Maybe if we started to think about the guitar that way and said, okay, I'm going to start here on the fingerboard every time I pick up the guitar, C major. And knowing that I can find that C major, that same interval, equally distant from there, first fret, open string, C major, 10th fret, 9th fret, C major, all within those four strings, with the third rail third in the middle straight across it's unique it's different from anything else on the fingerboard what better way to understand the symmetry of the system than to start at the fulcrum to start at the center the c major scale is not c major because it starts on the third letter of the alphabet it's because it's part of a system which expresses the symmetry of intervals the symmetry of the distances between notes. All the notes on the guitar fingerboard are positioned based on that symmetry. Now, if that hasn't been something that you've seen on your radar screen before, I mean, I have several theories about that, and I think it has something to do with the way we approach things culturally. Now, this is a minefield, so I'm not going to go there right now. This is That's for another video. But I think we tend to start everything here, and we have this linear approach, and we work our way from end to end. And in doing that, we overlook certain things that, once you see them, become hard to overlook. I'm talking about a bit of a paradigm shift here. Thinking about the guitar fretboard as something that begins on the fifth fret on the third string with the note middle C in that position and extending, radiating out from there eventually to all six strings. Now I've omitted the sixth string and the fifth string from this conversation in this video but I will be doing another video that includes all six strings. It's just that the four top strings on the guitar form this primary symmetry. It's the clearest way to express the idea of how the key of C works on the fingerboard. Now hopefully you find something useful there. If you have any thoughts or comments, please feel free to leave them below. If you have not subscribed yet, please do. If you have subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff, and I will see you soon. Thanks.